Hi, I'm Michael Stipe from the band R.E.M. We're all aware of the vast environmental problems that seem at times insurmountable uh, locally, nationally, internationally. The take that you're about to watch is about 40 young people from all over the world who came together in the Santa Cruz Mountains of Northern California to discuss these environmental problems and to hash out some of the concerns and obstacles that are facing this generation and to try to figure out what could be done about it. I watched it, I dug it, I got inspired by it. I hope you will too. It's all about connecting. I think this is amazing. I'm just uh, psyched to be a part of it. I was, I've learned so much by being here and uh, about all different issues and about a lot of environmental issues that I didn't know anything about. Father Jungle, Mother Sea. Nothing you can teach me. I've gone so far from your arms. Maybe just too far to reach me. Did I lose my language? Did I forget all my words? Did I lose my language? We have come here this week as a group from all over the world. Each one of us are leaders in our own communities. Each one of us represents the hope that the future brings. Life is strong. Nature is so strong. No matter your social background, education, religious background, we all face one destiny. We're actually completely interdependent on each other and interrelated and interconnected in every way. Father Rain, Mother Mud, your silence fills my heart with anguish. Till I turn away from you. The strangest thing was when I first got this job as president of the Sierra Club, I was summoned to the White House to come and meet the president and the vice president. And I was in this formal reception, it was called Environment Day at the White House. And uh, I felt this kind of stiff hand on my shoulder and I sort of spun around and there was Vice President Gore. And uh, he turned to me and he said, so what took you so long? Which is like, well, you know, I'm 23, so I guess I got here pretty quick. So I immediately turned back to him and said, no, 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 what's taken you so long these four, past three years? Because what we've seen is that the vice president, who clearly cares about the environment, has slowed down and hasn't yet demonstrated the leadership that we need him to. If we continue polluting at the rate that we are, um, if, we, if our corporations carry on, if we continue to make weapons at the rate that we are, then we're going to destroy the planet. When I start to understand that some people in the world are using way more than their share of the resources, and it's making the whole rest of the species of the planet suffer, not just all the other humans, then I get really scared. So let's, let's say everyone was developed, like developed nations like Japan, Australia, the United States. That means every, of, every country was consuming the same level of materials. It's an impossibility theorem because you'd need seven planets just as mines and waste dumps to allow everyone to have as much minerals, oil and gas as we consume here in the north. The average North American consumes five times more than a Mexican, ten times more than a Chinese person, and 30 times more than a person from India. We are the most voracious consumers in the world. We have to start to reconcile the fact that our consumption is driving these really nasty impacts in local communities. The main issue that really gives me pain in the world is the state of indigenous people around the globe. It's like the American Native Indians here, the Tibetans in Tibet, 
the Aboriginals in Australia, the Maasais in Africa, and so on, they're all having the same major problems. These people have so much to teach us. They have the book of sustainability written in their brains, and we have so much to learn from them. And yet, instead, we go around claiming they're underdeveloped and forcing our version and vision of development on them. Every country I go to, they all have the same problems. They all have the same uh, concerns. I realize there's so much destruction in my country. The country depends on the forest. So every day you see trucks cutting timber to be exported to the United States, Europe, and elsewhere. The trees in there, they're 2,000 years old. I mean, some of those trees were around before Christ was. And then, you know, in half an hour, it can be gone. <laughs> Environmental destruction, exploitation, pollution, so many injustices, environmental racism. And it's a growing concern because a lot of people are not still aware of what is happening. 10 million children under the age of 12 years old in the United States live within one mile of a toxic waste site. There is a school in the South Bronx, and in this school, they're, they fired their regular nurse and hired a respiratory therapist. That's because every one of the kids has asthma. And why is that? It's because they're right next door to a, to a toxic plant that's emitting these toxic fumes into their playground. So all their lives, they're playing with their balls and having handball and all that, and they're breathing in the, the remnants of our industrial society. There's a great um, concern on the growing population growth population and environment is very much interrelated. If there's an increased population, of course, the resources will also be used up by this growing population. These population issues affect uh, everything that happens to young people. Well, the young people today are facing some massive destruction and change that's going to be happening in the next three to four years and uh, the, the planet is in a very fragile state. And I, I ask personally, how are the young people and how are we being prepared to step into these positions of stewardship? I'm concerned about the future, but I'm also concerned about the present. We follow one another down this path, but no one really Humans are destroying things as big as the sky, the ozone layer. How could we affect the ozone layer? It's so big. We get confused about priorities and what we really need. We have forests which are dwindling at an alarming rate. We have a really frightening society right now where dirty money equals dirty politics, where we see our politicians selling out our rights and our values because of the money they're receiving. Over and over we see things that make us turn our eyes away. My whole purpose in life is to protect these animals. The things unacceptable before turn into casual display. 20% of the world is consuming 80% of the world's resources. Whatever we do now will matter for the next generation to come. Most uh, concern that I have is that the people all around the world is losing their hope. When you tell them, don't destroy the environment, keep some for the future, do not take it serious. 
And as a young person, I'm called by seeing these things to do something about it because this is my future here we're talking about. I want to come back to this, this idea of, of a, a Generation X. Um, there is no Generation X. There is no apathetic, disengaged, you know, bombastic, uncaring generation of people who don't really care. There are people who have received a degenerated world, a world that has all these problems that seem so much larger than each of us. I've come to realize that no matter how big the problem is, no matter how overwhelming the problem is, it takes one man to stand up to do something. Every, every, everything, everything in this world is meaning something. I mean, our very existence depends on the animal kingdom and the, and the insect and the plant life. And it's all, it's a very delicate balance and we just have to recognize our place in that balance. And the next step probably will be action. So there will be awareness, understanding and action because all of this awareness and understanding will be nothing if it's not coupled with action. Well, when I was nine years old, I saw a television show that got me involved with the environment. So um, I started doing things like writing letters, for example, to the president. I put up billboards. I put up 250 billboards all around the United States for free. Well, when I got the letter back from the president, it was a form letter addressed to a dear young citizen telling me to stay in school and not to do drugs. And at first, his letter made me a little mad, but then I realized that I can't depend on other people to take care of the problem for me. I've got to do it myself if I want things solved. One of the things that myself and young people all around the country uh, have been involved with over the last a year and a half was an effort to, to collect a million signatures on an environmental Bill of Rights petition. Consequently, we saw the first pro-environmental vote happen in the 104th Congress, which was a vote uh, to keep enforcement powers for the Environmental Protection Agency. Huge success. So good job for students around the country. That's what young people need to do. They need to get their friends involved. We need them to start writing letters to the editor and communicating to the broad public that we can make a difference. I started a club called Kids Face or Kids for a Clean Environment with six members. We just did simple things like planting trees, recycling, writing letters. Well, I've been with the club for seven years now, and the club, it's grown to over 300,000 members, plus we have a newsletter um, that's distributed to three million. I really see that um, to get involved, you don't need to be a huge activist, you don't need to start organizations, that it's real simple, and then if we all would just begin to make conscious choices about what we do in our lives, that that is the main thing. Every single person has a, a very definite vote every time they buy something. You don't like a company, you don't like their policies, you don't buy their product. It's simple as that. If you choose to eat meat, fine, do it, but you got to minimize it a little bit. The more that that's done, the less the rainforest get cut down, the more grain is grown and eaten rather than fed to cattle and, and wasted in that way. It's ridiculous that we're cutting down trees that are, you know, maybe five or six times older than the oldest living human being uh, and turning them into phone books and, and, you know, record jackets for that matter, when we could be using hemp instead as paper, as building products, uh, as other things, shoes. It's one that doesn't necessarily deplete the soil, uh, but rather adds to it. I think that community gardens are also an important step towards making our cities more livable. Not only can you grow food for yourself, but you get to interact with other people because it's community sharing the garden. You have, you're interacting with the earth, you're growing food, you know, you get your hands in the soil. You're not just with concrete and asphalt and car exhaust all day, but you can get food. You get a tangible result. And I feel that this part of the environmental movement is extremely important. There comes a time when we all got to speak as one. No more one
man stand and shout at another one. Oh no, 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 no. I'm just like you, I'm just like me, I'm just like me. Yeah. Yeah. Impress yourself with your tolerance. And practice for the day, you know the day is coming. There comes a day when we all speak as one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Raise up our voice and speak with everyone. Oh, oh, oh. Time is time, time is precious, time is nothing, time when it's not on your side. We've come here this week as a group from all over the world to awaken our connection with our environment. Every day, 100 species of plants and animals are being wiped out from the face of this planet. We are finding that the only solution is taking action. Right now, we are in a moment where we need to change the global paradigm of the way people are thinking. And there is a way to change that global paradigm, but it's not through the techniques that we know. It's not about lobbying Congress. It's about changing the way people think. What a person can do is really just keep getting, gaining higher levels of awareness into themselves and what motivates them to do what they're doing and what's motivating other people to do what they're doing and how what we do affects other people and how what they do affects us. And I'm very positive and I want to stay positive inside and I don't want, I know that there's a lot of destruction going on but I'm not going to let that make me bring fear into my body because I know if I have fear inside that's just going to add to the collective fear and anger that's on this world and that we need to bring more love and compassion into our lives. Life is strong, nature is so strong and I don't think we have the power to completely eradicate it but we definitely have the power to eradicate ourselves and that's just silly, that's just stupid, there's no reason for it so that's my tangent on the whole. <laughs> I think the realization that, uh, that humanity is coming to right now is, uh, is that we're interconnected and that we're all one thing and it's, I look at it as being real similar to the idea of the world being flat that everyone used to think that and that, uh, you know, that. <laughs> so we have work to do. Plenty of it. And we're willing to do it. And there's hope. We are young and we have a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And with your help from Yes and all these other young people we've met today from all over the world, we are extremely excited. This is Yes. We just say Yes to life. And we, <laughs> and we, we want to encourage. <laughs>
There's got to be a movement of millions of caring people who are willing to address these problems and willing to turn that care into action. There's no time like now. Beautiful little human, you have to make a choice. Sit and watch what's wrong around you, or bravely use your voice. Will you lay awake as I do and shake and clench your fist? Find your courage because you know you were born for this. Uh -huh. You'll find your courage because you know you were born for this. Yeah. Now turn off your TV and go outside.